Welcome back to Veertech Gaming. Finally, something that a lot of you have been banging at the door for, and for a long time, it's finally arrived. Fortify, Veertech's very own version of the raid protection systems. Featuring the most customizable raid protection system available to date, Fortify is here to help take you and your game server to the next level. The customizing options are so extensive and so flexible, it really makes for a great feature to finally bring to you guys. We've got a lot of ground to cover today, so let's get started. Beginning the guide with the admin settings. Admins can set up a host of items with the ability to turn Fortify on or off. Editing zone sizes, distances between forts, amount of forts that clans can own, and much, much more. We can also include schedulers for those all-important events, like raid weekends, raid evenings, or even end-of-wipe raids. Please note, if your game server undergoes a map or full wipe, then all current forts will be wiped from the game server at the same time. This is a mechanism designed to avoid old forts being placed on a new map. In addition, any fortify settings that are changed will only take full effect once the zone has gone through a cycle. In other words, been enabled or been disabled. This can be forced immediately by toggling the setting mode to off, allow for 60 seconds for all forts to switch off, then toggle back to your original setting. So with all that out of the way, Let's dive into the Fortify admin settings. Starting off in Discord, using the command slash settings fort, you will see that we get greeted with a huge list of options for our forts. Let's break them down. The first option is toggle mode, and in this setting we have four options. Off. This completely disables Fortify, meaning no one will be able to create any more zones, and additionally, any existing zones will be disabled. Offline. The offline mode is for Fortify to be switched on, allowing users to set up their forts within game and avoid that nasty offline raid. Players can then have full use of the fort commands. This will mean that the full rules of Fortify will apply. No raid. No raid is a permanent protection method, allowing all forts to be enabled 24-7 regardless of players online or offline status. And finally, scheduled raid. Forts are bound to the rule of scheduling meaning the standard Fortify protection will be enabled up to the point where you introduce a schedule, which will override all fort settings, disabling and enabling them at your own will. This one could be useful for events such as raid weekends. These are all toggleable by clicking this toggle mode button here, and as you can see, the text box here is updated to show you your currently active mode. Default zone size is measured in meters, and by default, Veertech sets these as 10 meters in radius. This is approximately enough space for a single layer of honeycomb on a 2x2 base, inclusive of a large furnace on each end. By clicking this button, you'll be triggering a pop-up text box. If you refer to the documentation, you'll see that we have a helpful diagram which could assist you in what default zone size you want to go with. Simply enter your chosen meter age and hit submit to confirm your choice. Minimum distance between forts. To change the minimum distance between forts, you will need to select the Edit Minimum Distance Between Forts button, and again you will trigger a text box pop-up on your screen. Again, by default, 10 meters is set, and we're going to change this to 30, just to allow our players for more room to expand, should they need it, and again hitting the Submit button to confirm your selection. Protect Fort Limit Per Clan We also have the ability to allow clans to have more than one fort. This enables clans, should you wish to allow it, to have protection on as many bases as you choose. This could be for boat bases, farm bases, and any other construction that they've built. Simply click Edit Protection Limit Per Clan. This time our default is set at 1, but you have the choice to set this limit and again, confirm using the Submit button. Minutes to Activation. The minutes to activation is for offline mode only, and dictates how many minutes will pass from the last clan member logging offline until the fort activates. This blocks users from being able to block raids the moment they start by simply logging off. The default for this is 10 minutes, which can be changed by clicking the Edit Minutes to Activation button. Again, you'll see a text box pop up asking for your input. This is set in minutes, and once you're happy with your choice, confirm by clicking Submit. Edit Hours to Expire This setting again is for the offline mode and no raid mode only, and denotes how many minutes will pass after all clan members log off until the fort will go down, essentially stopping unlimited protection. This can be useful to void players using alt accounts whilst their main accounts being offline holds up the fort continuously. By default, this is set to zero, which indicates never. Should you change it to another value and wish to return it to never, simply enter zero again and hit submit. Show area message. 
This setting allows us to choose whether we want there to be a message shown upon players entering or leaving the area. This is an on-off toggle, which will be indicated in the message as you click the button as you can see here on screen. Enter Area Message When selecting the button Edit Enter Area Message, we can enter a custom message for when players enter a fortified area. These are blanket messages which cannot be set for each individual clan, however you can use the clan placeholders to make them personal. Please dive into the documentation and head to the placeholders page for more information. For now, we're going to enter clan tag with color, watch those brackets, owns this fort and is currently offline. Hit submit and you will see our message has been added to the text box. Leaving area message. When selecting the button edit leave area message, we can also enter a custom message when players leave the fortified area. Here we are going to enter clan tag with color, again, watch those brackets, thank you for leaving the area. Hit submit and you will see our message has again been added to the text box. Use clan color for forts. We can choose if we wish to allow clan colors for the setting of the forts, meaning the fort bubble will be that of the color of the clan. Just a simple toggle switch which will update the settings message as you can see here on the screen. Protected fort color. Because Discord has no option for a selective palette, you will need to create roles for specific colors you wish to use for forts. Simply head into Discord server settings, create a role and select the color you wish the forts to show. Once that has been created, you will see upon triggering the slash settings fort command that at the bottom we have an edit fort color menu which is pre-filled with our roles. Simply select the role that you just created and the fort settings will be applied from the color of that role. You can now, if you wish, head back into the server settings and delete that role. Now we have just obtained the color we needed. This role is no longer necessary. Enable PVP. The enable PVP button is an on off toggle enabling or disabling whether players can deal damage to other players within the fort. Simply click the button toggle enable PVP and watch the message update again here on screen. Enable NPC versus player damage. The enable NPC button is an on off toggle much like the PVP one we just had. Enabling or disabling whether NPCs can deal damage to other players within the fort. Simply click the button, toggle enable NPC versus player damage, and again, watch the message here on screen update accordingly. Radiation damage. You can also adjust the radiation damage, allowing radiation to occur when another player enters the fort. This is a value-based adjustment. By clicking edit radiation damage, you'll be greeted with a text box. Please enter here the value you wish damage to be at between zero and 300. The default is set at zero. This can be particularly useful to avoid players taking advantage of the system and keeping up forts whilst they're online. So for that reason, I'm maxing this out. Enter 300 in here and click submit. Building damage. You can toggle on off building damage within an active fort by players by simply clicking the button toggle is building damage allowed, you can toggle it on and off. This will be updated within the message as with all the other toggles. This one is particularly useful for things like raidable bases on PvE servers maybe, or raid weekends on PvE servers, something like that, I don't know, you'll find use for it. Building Allowance You can also toggle on and off building structures within an active fort by players. By simply clicking the button toggle is building allowed, you can toggle it on and off. This will again be updated here in the messages. We're nearly there now, stay with me. Schedules. We'll talk about scheduling in a later video in more detail, but since the button is here, we'll cover it briefly right now. Any scheduled fort events you have can be displayed by clicking here. As you can see, we have none set, but as mentioned, we'll cover this in a later video. And finally, that all important help button. Should you need to recall a brief overview of any of the settings we just covered, simply click the help button and you will see here a quick rundown of everything we just covered. <sighs> Well, that was a mouthful. As promised, a huge update with the same great customization and some unbelievable potential. We can't wait to see some of the crazy creations we know you guys will come up with in the coming weeks and months as we all get comfortable with this huge update. We'll see you next time where we dive into Fortify scheduling and some of its use cases to help get those minds racing for their own ideas. And until then, happy grubbing.